as great as he was as a coach, 500 plus wins, as great as he was as an administrator, he saved Kentucky's basketball program when he hired Rick Pitino. Sam Newton was a better humanitarian. Try to picture, if you're young, not trying to be insulting, it's tough to imagine what it's like in Alabama in the 1960s when you recruit the first African-American to play basketball at Alabama, Wendell Hudson. And he was the only African-American on campus. And the abuse that Wendell Hudson took all over the South we can't talk about it. It was that bad. He integrated Trancy. He integrated Alabama. He saved Kentucky's basketball program. He was part of the Southeastern Conference for eight decades. Eight. Knows as many people in sports as anybody that I've ever met. Pitched for Kentucky. Pitched in the minor leagues for the Yankees. Was on the bench when Kentucky won the national championship in 1951. When he got here, do you know who, pres who the president was? Harry Truman. That just tells you. That just tells you how long and just that, that how deep his connections have been here to Big Blue Nation. There is no one else in the history of sports who has done what Seam has done. It's pretty simple. He's helped out more coaches, more administrators, more athletes. The budget when he got here more than tripled from the time he got here and the time he left. He did more things for more people and had more friends. It's pretty simple. But think about it. Recruiting the first black athlete in Alabama the way the South was in the 1960s. And he had the guts to do it. And you know what he used to say? It wasn't me. It was Wendell Hudson. Because Wendell Hudson was the man who did it. And so he said, hey, give all the credit to Wendell Hudson. Sam Newton was a great humanitarian. First, a great coach. Second, a great administrator. Third. And so your time here, and tell me just a, a good memory you got of him here. Tell me just from your years of uh, sports journalism here. Easy to talk to. Mm -hmm. Very easy to talk to. Um, he would listen to you. There are a lot of administrators in sports who don't listen to you. He would listen to you. You could go up and back with him. You could disagree with him. It was okay. He had a calmness about him and a confidence about him that was earned. And he never flaunted it. He never said, hi, I'm C.M. Newton. I mean, his Vandy teams didn't have the best talent, but they were fun. They were shooters. They ran. They were exciting to watch. Now, when you uh, when he came on as athletic director in 19, I think 1989 or 1988, around that time, you were, you were here in Lexington. What was the, if you recall, the initial sort of reception when he uh, came back here to uh, Lexington? You have to understand, during that time period, just before he was hired, was the worst time period during my time at Channel 18 because it was the NC2A mess. Mm -hmm. Okay? The program was in shambles. He rode into town on this white horse, to, literally, to <laughs> save the program. I mean, he hired Rick Pitino. People now hate Rick Pitino. That's nice, but the truth is, Rick Pitino saved the program. Rick Pitino wouldn't have come here without C.M. Newton. C.M. Newton sold him on coming here. C.M. Newton had as much to do with saving this basketball program as Rick Pitino. His loss uh, to this town, just tell me, is just... It's humongous. Humongous. 88 years old. I mean, you, you know, you talk about somebody living a full life. What more could he have done? Eight decades that he was involved with the Southeastern Conference. He was still a trusted friend and advisor to countless, even in his 80s.